Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the reactivity of ethylene and how the double bond in ethylene makes it very active and thereby makes it be able to produce different types of products which we find quite useful such as ethanol and the, and the like. So in this we're going to go over something quite related in terms of the dot point. I'll read it out. It says identify data, plan and perform a first-hand investigation to compare the reactivities of appropriate alkenes of corresponding alkanes in bromine water. So first of all it says compare, so we have to compare, see how they're similar and how they're different. And it says the appropriate alkenes and corresponding alkanes. So first of all it says appropriate. The reason why it says appropriate because we can't just choose any, any alkane or any alkene because we're going to make sure we choose one which is actually um, dissolvable in liquid or liquid itself. And the problem with ethylene, so ethylene was a alkene and ethane was a alkane. So I'm going to write this would have been this would have been an alkene and this would be an alkane. But the reason why we can't choose them, the reason why they are not appropriate, is because both of them are gas. So these are both gas, and if you were to put them into bromine water, they would just leave again. So they wouldn't stay. So these are not appropriate for this experiment because we can't use them in bromine water. But overall they're good ones to look at because they're quite important, but we can't use them for this experiment. But the ones you would have looked at, most likely, would have been cyclohexane and cyclohexene. Before we start, I want to make sure we go over those words alkane and alkene again. An alkane was something that had no double bond. Usually carbon, a hydrocarbon chain, or in a circle form, in a cyclic form, that had no double bond. Whereas a alkene had a double bond. So an alkene had the double bond. So we chose the appropriate um, alkenes and alkanes we chose would be cyclohexane. So first of all, cyclo means that it comes in a circle, a circle shape. And the good thing if it comes in a circle shape is it makes it more liquid, makes it more liquid. And again, we're going to put it into bromine water, so it should be liquid. Hex refers to it has a six carbon, so hex means six. And that ain part refers to it being an alkane. So it has no double bonds, which is good because we want, to, we want it to be an alkane. And it is liquid at room temperature, which is good because we want to put it into bromine water. So that was for cyclohexane. So this is the structure of cyclohexane. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And you can see between the carbons, there's no double bonds. On the opposite side, we've got cyclohexene. Cycler means, again, in a circle. Hex means, again, that six. And the in part refers to it having one double bond. And if you look at the structure, this is cyclohexene. It's very similar, except that it has a double bond. And it's got the double bond right here. So it's cyclohexene. So what you would have done is you would have put these two into bromine water. So we've got here we have bromine water, and we've got cyclohexane and cyclohexene. Yellow is for cyclohexene. Uh, hexane and purple for cyclohexane. So you put some drops, a couple of milliliters of it into this bromine water and you would have looked, observed for a reaction, you would have looked what happens to water itself. So you can imagine you put up some droplets or a couple of mils of these cyclohexene and cyclohexane. They are liquid because they are in that cycloform. You would have put them into the, that water and you would have observed the water to see if it changed color. And what you would have realized is this. Um, I'm going <coughs> to go over the analogy I used again, or the comparison, or the way to understand it again that I used in the last video. And again, I'm sorry if that seems a bit inappropriate, and it is a bit inappropriate, the one I will use, but I couldn't think of a better one. So you can imagine these bromine waters. Uh, so these bromine, this might be the bromine water, or molecules of the bromine water. So it's in bromine water. And you've put cyclohexene close to it. Cyclohexene has a double bond, so that here is a double bond. That means at that point there's lots of electrons. Bromine is a halogen. Halogen is a element, or a group of elements that are very electronegative, so they love electrons. So if they see electrons, they're very attracted to electrons. So the way you can kind of 
again, this is an inappropriate, inappropriate part, the way you can look at this is if you have these two bromines, which are attached, so they are connected, you can imagine them to be like a married couple, but they're having problems, and they're, they're kind of growing apart, and then they see this carbon, this double bond, and they're very attracted, so each of these are very attracted to a double bond, and what they do is they kind of split apart, because they want to grab that double bond, and what they do is they will split, and then connect, so they will connect to a double bond, and then become part of that chain. Like, like so, and a double bond will be gone because they they are connected to it. So this next part I'm doing here, I'm removing the double bond because it's gone. So what happened is bromine attached to the cyclohexane, hexene, because of the double bond, because these bromines loved electrons, and there were lots of electrons at the double bond. If this sounds a bit foreign or a bit confusing, I would watch the last video again, where I go over that in quite some detail. I didn't want to go over that over that in this much detail in this video because I figured I've already done it in the last video. Um, but yeah, so these bromines, because of that, that um, double bond, become attracted and attached to it. Whereas here, and with the cyclohexane, when we put cyclohexane into it, cyclohexane has no double bond. So these guys, these bromine, same bromines, won't be attracted because they're only attracted to places which have lots of electrons. And this bromine water, or this cyclohexane doesn't have any area which has particularly many electrons. So nothing's going to happen here. It's like there will literally be no connection at all. They'll just stick to themselves. So what you will see of the water itself, if you observe the reaction of water, if you put bromine water and cyclohexene together, what will happen is you have your purple dots still in here now. But what they did is they actually absorbed quite a bit of the bromine, which meant that the, the color changes with bromine water because it becomes more absorbed by these um, cyclohexenes. So you have color fading. That's the reaction you observe. Color fading of the bromine water. And the reason why is because these bromine molecules are attaching to that cyclohexene, which changes the color of the bromine water because they're basically jumping out of the water and onto these cyclohexenes. Whereas in the other one, you had absolutely no reaction. Because they just stay, they stick to themselves. Nothing happened, so the bromine water stays the same. There was no reaction when you put cyclohexane into bromine water. Right? <clears throat> so I'm going to go over again the whole experiment you would have done. Then, if I doubt a plan, perform a first investigation to compare the reactivities of appropriate alkenes with the corresponding alkanes in bromine water. So cyclohexane, which is an alkane, showed no reaction compared to cyclohexene, which is an alkene, an alkene, which has a double bond, and that showed a reaction because a bromine attached to the cyclohexene and made the color fade. And this experiment helped us to understand that if you have a double bond, then you are much more reactive than if you have no double bonds. So all alkenes are much more reactive than the alkanes. So these alkenes are much more reactive the reason why is because of that double bond. Much more reactive. Reactive because of the double bond. So I hope that was useful. But yeah, if you haven't watched the last video, I would um, encourage you to watch that because it will help as well. So, But I hope that helped.